were talking about Bill Belichick having a press conference today. And if you could ask the following question, Todd, give Mike Reese the question. If you were there today that you would have asked Bill Belichick. Hey, coach, in spite of all your success and all the Super Bowl wins, what would you say to those who feel like you're on the hot seat right now? Okay, let's bring in Mike Reese, the uh, great reporter, covers the Patriots for the mothership. He was at the press conference. How do you think, first of all, good morning, Mike. How do you think uh, coach would answer that question from Todd Fritz? Uh, Good morning, Dan. Honor to be with you. Um, Hey, I'm just focused on the Saints. Got (laughs) Got a big game against the Saints. Just focusing on what I can control. Really, that that's he wouldn't he wouldn't uh, even tiptoe towards that at all. Not at all. Okay. Um, Dan, th- this is uh, his twenty fourth year, and I think every Wednesday press conference starts the same way. He comes in and he talks about the team they're facing, gives like a detailed scouting breakdown, and then any question that you ask that doesn't connect to that game or that team, he's a master deflector. He just won't he won't entertain it. What's the difference between the local coverage of the Patriots and the national coverage? That's a good question. Um, I would say the national will focus on the bigger picture. Hey, is he on the hot seat, right? Um, where's this thing headed? The local coverage, we've got like literally as we talked in within the last 10 minutes, we've had a trade agreement for a cornerback. J.C. Jackson. Uh, So we're drilling down on those details. Uh, Who's coming back to practice? What, you know, what, what's the team look like this week to try to get him back in the win column? So probably a little more micro in focus than the big picture of, could this be the, are we looking at the end here of, of this run? I mentioned this yesterday a couple of times. So uh, I'm asking my audience to bear with me. Would Bill Belichick, the GM fire Bill Belichick, the coach I don't think he would Dan he 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 doesn't really believe I don't want to say he doesn't believe in it but I think he's a traditionalist he's old school in the sense of he he likes the the patience model you know so like what Pittsburgh does right they have a bad year they have a couple bad years like generally they're going to stick with their coach they're going to stick with their structure They're going to give their people in place a chance to work it out. Um, So I think, to me, when I think about Bill Belichick, the way he views things, I think he comes from that school. And I think he would demand better results, but he wouldn't go for the hook. How important do you think it is for Robert Kraft to have Bill Belichick break Don Shula's record as his head coach? I think in his heart of hearts, Dan, that's what he wants. But I don't think that it's a, a 100% given that he's willing to say it's happening no matter what. And they had a event, an event about a month ago here at the stadium. Uh, they had new construction and they had a ribbon cutting. And I asked Robert Kraft about being out on the practice field with Bill Belichick before the first game. And he looked me in the eye, Dan, and he goes, You know, he wanted me out there. He wanted to show me something. And then he said to me, make no mistake, it's about winning. And to me, it was a point he seemed to want to get across. Like, yeah, we got to win. This is about winning, you know. So and that echoes something he had said before, too. And I don't know if Patriot fans are used to that slow September because Bill always, it felt like he used September like his preseason and then the season started like now. But you had Brady. And Brady was always the light at the end of the tunnel. This is a team that's not relevant, not interesting, and not threatening. Uh, are, Are we supposed to expect something different from the Patriots from now on? No. No, the standard is to be, Robert Kraft has said, the standard is playoffs, like got to get to the playoffs and anything can happen. And I think your point, Dan, is is well taken as we've gotten further away from Tom Brady. The numbers are not good numbers. Sub 500 record since 2000, the last playoff win, Super Bowl over the Rams. Yeah. So this is what they are. And so, yeah, like that, that's what it is. The bottom line. Because you look around, the Jets are are going to get better. 
Um, they have more talent. They're more interesting. The Bills are formidable. Miami is, you know, potentially great. So it's a tough division there. What if they go 5-12? and 12? I think that puts Robert Kraft in a very tough position. And what, what does that 5-12 and 12 look like, Dan? So to me, the first three games this year, I thought they were competitive against Philly, one of the best teams in the league. I thought they were competitive against Miami, one of the better teams in the league. They eked one out against the Jets, probably fortunate, right, that Aaron Rodgers wasn't there. And then it got away from them fast against the Cowboys in the second quarter, and they were outclassed. So if it looks like 5-12, and 12, and most of the games were what we saw this past Sunday against the Cowboys, I think you start asking the hard question, is it, is it, is it time to, to move on? But if it looks closer to the first three games, yeah. to me, that's a tough spot for Robert Kraft. What was that like when Brady came back? this year was there any awkwardness to it i wouldn't say awkwardness um to me as and i've covered them now you know i did all of tom i did even before tom when pete carroll was the coach what i felt was a cross section between everything you're talking about dan like they got to move on from the past yeah it's a new era but here they are celebrating the past. So to, to me, it was like a conflict, right? But but they they had to do it because I think it was important to the crafts that the first opportunity they had to celebrate Tom Brady as a retired player was as a Patriot. They want to make sure people remember him as a Patriot more than anything else. Does Belichick know you by name? He does, and the only reason I can confirm that, Dan, is that after this most recent game against the Cowboys, when I asked him about Mac Jones being pulled from the game with three minutes, 41 seconds left in the third quarter, uh, he told me that he didn't think there was any point of leaving him in the game. So I followed up, and I said, will Mac Jones be starting this week against the Saints? And he looked at me, and he said, I just said I didn't see any point of leaving him in the game, Mike. <laughs> he might have thought you were the Mike linebacker that, you know, <laughs> oh, my God. I my, my only brush with, well, I've been on the podium when they won the Super Bowl, so that's the only time I've really spoken to him. But I was there for the butt fumble game, and he came out of the locker room. I'm with Tony Dungy and Rodney Harrison. And it's a receiving line of sorts. So he's like, uh, hey, coach, uh, good to see you. Hey, Rodney. And then I put my hand out, and he just blew right by me. And I was like, all right, I'll get you next. I'll get you after the game, man. Yeah, don't get tied up here, pregame stuff. So probably didn't know who I was. Maybe he did, and that's why he blew right by me. Well, you know, keep fighting the good fight. Let us know if you need Fritzy to come up and uh, kind of stir up that press conference next week. Good stuff, Dan. I appreciate being on with you. Thank you, bud. That's Mike Reese. He covers the Patriots for the mothership. Didn't realize he had been there uh, that long a time. Wait, can I get Mike uh, real quick one more time? Did we? Mike? I'm with you. Okay. Yeah, I'm with you, Dan. Um, take me back to Pete Carroll and why it didn't work then, but it works now. So it was such a contrast to what they had with Bill Parcells. So remember, Parcells was here in New England. 93 to 96. And this was like the antithesis of the Parcells program. Here you have Pete Carroll coming in, you know, pumping his fists and, hey, let's get this going. Competition. And it was almost too much of a pendulum swing okay. for what they had prior. And I would say the expectation Parcells had him in the Super Bowl his last year. Pete was 500 competitive but just not at that, that same level. It was just too, too big of a swing, Dan, from one culture to really the other culture. All right. Thank you, Mike. We appreciate it.